All right, guys, what's going on? Cliff and Denny with On Your Own Outdoors. Hey, so uh, we're up in a tree up here on some public land. Um, and so anyways, fixing to get down. It's lunchtime. Had a pretty good morning, seen six deer. Um, comparatively speaking, comparatively speaking to what we've, uh, what we've been having happen in the last like four days, <laughs> it's, it's good. So right at daylight, I actually had two bucks come through. Um, the video should be up uh, later here this week, maybe next week, but we had two bucks come through, neither one of them was shooters. Uh, I natted, stomp one, and the only reason is because as he was coming through, I couldn't tell what he was. So as soon as he got to my opening, I went ahead and gave him a holler, and I was at full draw just in case, uh, just in case he would have been one that we wanted to one through. So anyways, that's not important. What is important, and the reason that we're doing this video, so, uh, Guys, one of the questions I get asked the most is what do I carry in my quiver? Um, so we're gonna kinda run through that today. Uh, as everybody knows, I do broadhead reviews, not testing, I do broadhead reviews, and so I have probably, I don't know, 20 different style of broadheads at the house. And um, so we're gonna start with number one. The, uh, the first broadhead, I actually keep it in the middle. So it's easy to find. The first broadhead that I run is the Rage Hypodermic. And there's a reason why. Hang on just a second here. That would be the reason why. So I'd love to show you the Hypodermic, but obviously there's reasons that I can't. It's because it's down there. So um, anyways, and I did this today for a reason. It's because I reach in my quiver and I grab the next one that I have the most faith in without even thinking about it, right? So I shoot my hypodermic, I carry one of each one of them. I don't carry multiples of a broadhead. I carry one of each one of the broadheads. Um, so the next one, the NAP kill zone. That is pick number two for me whenever I am hunting. If for some reason I go out and I don't have any hypodermics, it seems like I always reach for that NAP. I can tell you for those two, it really doesn't have anything to do with the testing. It has more to do with the fact that, um, you know, I've shot the hypodermics for years. I have faith in them, as I say all the time, confidence is accuracy. Um, and so that's what I shoot. The second one is this NAP. And the reason for that is they operate just like a rage. And then, um, I shot a really good deer with one last year, put a really nice size hole in him, so yeah. All right, so let's keep going. Y'all don't judge me. I'm bad about cleaning my arrows. I don't do it like I should. So uh, two of these arrows have already been through a deer and they need to be cleaned off. So anyways, next one I'm gonna go to, which would probably be number three, is the G5 Montec. There's a reason that I have this one. So the reason that I carry the G5 Montec is when I find myself in an area that is thick. So, you know, there's a whole bunch of little limbs and such. Um, I will throw the Montec on there just because I don't want to risk um, catching a limb with one of the mechanicals and it opening up in flight. So, um, yep, Montec. That would be, you know, one and two are basically the same thing. This would be third choice. Uh, if you watch the video, this was one of the only two fixed blades that I've shot that at 50 yards flew exactly like a um, field tip. So, number three. Oh, opened up coming out of the quiver. NAP double cross. So, these did not test out the absolute best. They didn't do bad, right? They didn't test out the best though or review out the best. But I can tell you one thing about these is that um, did shoot a deer with them two years ago. The hole was super nasty. So the NAP um, double cross is something that I always keep in my quiver. I've had one in my quiver for like three years. At the point in time that I shoot one of them, <laughs> it's been a bad morning because I've done this three or four times. Or, you know, I've got blood trails all over the place, but it, I have got there with the hogs. So uh, it is a possibility. Uh, and then finally, the last one that I have in here 
is going to be the Grim Reaper Carny 4. So, the Grim Reaper 4 blade. There's one reason why I have this in here. Um, this broadhead did not test well. I really, really enjoy shooting the three blade Grim Reapers. Have for a long time. Um, I shot them exclusively for probably three or four years and then I had one that two blades broke um, and I almost lost the deer. I found the deer, it did its job, but the blood trail was very minimum because two blades broke. So whenever that happened, I quit shooting them and I went to the hypodermics and I've never looked back. Have I lost deer using hypodermics? Absolutely. I don't care if you're throwing a sledgehammer through them. You see people lose them with a 300 Win Mag all the time. So um, that's going to happen. It's something nobody likes to do, but that's part of it. The only reason I have that Carney 4 in my quiver is because of Blaine Pierce. So Blaine Pierce, if you're on here, that is the only reason that I have that in there. Um, he's one of the, he follows our Facebook page and I think he actually follows the YouTube as well. Maybe not. So when I posted, when I did the review of the Carney 4, um, it ended up with a bent blade. It is what it is. Uh, can't make it up. And so anyways, Blaine commented on there, so there's the nastiest broadhead on the market and blah, 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 that's all he uses, I think. So, uh, yeah, Blaine, you're the reason that I have a Carney 4 in my quiver, and I am going to shoot a deer with it at some point in time this year because I want to see for myself. And, uh, and so anyways, it does, having the four blade, it does leave that hole like a souped up size um, fixed blade. So that's really cool. So, anyways, just a little review here. Number one, always going to be a hypodermic. Doesn't matter where I'm at, what I'm doing. Uh, unless I'm in just a nasty, nasty thicket with 25 yard or closer shots, um, it's going to be that hypodermic. Number two, NAP kill zone. Um, I don't shoot the max, I think, um, but the NAP kill zone. And then number three, which is might as well be like number one or number two, right? Is that G5 Montech. It is the one of the only two um, fixed blade broadheads that I've shot and did a review of that at 50 yards left, it flew exactly like my field tip. Hell, it might've flew better than my field tip. And then uh, number four is gonna be that NAP double cross. Uh, again, the reason that I have them in there, seen them on a TV show years ago, thought they looked cool. And, uh, and so anyways, I got them, shot a deer with them. They did their job, and so there we go. And then finally, we've got the Carney 4. Anyways, yeah, guys, that's what we've got. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell up top. You never know when we're going to do another video. Um, I'm waiting on Mr. Camo Dust to walk up now. He's got, he's bringing me a knife so I can take care of this. It's actually super funny. So Chris uh, Parnell, if y'all don't know him, he's the camo dust guy, super awesome dude. Um, he came out this week to hunt with me for like three or four days, maybe maybe three days. Anyways, so you just seen where that deer's at. So I texted him and I was like, hey man, I thought you was gonna come down here and take pictures for me. And he was like, oh yeah, it's awesome. I'm gonna come video the recovery. <laughs> he doesn't know it's three foot from my tree. <laughs> So anyways, guys, I appreciate y'all for watching. Um, we will see y'all later this week uh, with the stand review. So anyways, good hunting, guys, and uh, good luck out there.